Hi, Internet. Welcome to the Grudge Run YouTube channel. It is Thin Lizzy Thursday, which means we are breaking down a Thin Lizzy song on this channel. That's what we do on Thin Lizzy Thursday. Uh, I'm a big Thin Lizzy fan, so I know all these songs. Uh, so they're not necessarily true reactions. Uh, I used to do a lot of reactions on the channel, uh, you know, requests, stuff that people wanted me to do. Um, but, you know, this was a fun tradition I started just because I felt that Thin Lizzy deserves more love. People need to hear more of their music. Um, I had some guests fill in on uh, a couple of Thin Lizzy Thursdays this month because I was recovering from a cough, rather, last month. Um, but I'm uh, excited to get into this song this week. Last song, last week, uh, I was addressing the songs that my fill-in hosts uh, did while I was absent because you had to hear my thoughts on them. But this week... We've got, uh, in my opinion, a Stone Cold classic. It is a Thin Lizzy deep cut, but this is probably my favorite deep cut in the catalog. It wasn't necessarily a live staple. Um, it, you know, it isn't necessarily one of their more famous songs, but I think this one is truly, truly excellent. So this song is off the Black Rose album, my favorite Thin Lizzy album, and this song is called Toughest Street in Town. This is one of those songs where... I feel like this is um, super competitive, super strong. This song, you know, should have been a radio staple, should have been a hit, should have been a concert staple. And when, um, you know, Mike Walsh, who filled in, said, you know, I think Thin Lizzy is kind of a mediocre band. Their catalog isn't that great. Um, this is a song I would say is um, an excellent, you know, s rank song. Perfection, just really, really awesome. And... This is a song that I will go for to the bat for is being just a excellent, excellent, excellent rock and roll song. Uh, you know what? I've done enough yapping. Let's get right into it, and I'm going to tell you why the song is so great. <laughs> So uh, there's a lot going on there that we need to address. All right, so we've got a a really really great riff, uh, excellent production, uh, killer killer drumming, excellent momentum, and you've got a super emotive vocal from Phil Lynott in this song. And lyrically, you know, uh, I feel like uh, you know Thin Lizzy, I think, is sort of at their best when they're addressing um, urban strife. And I think this is one of the the strongest examples of that, where it's just um, this is on that viscerally resonates with me as you know someone who is you know from Cleveland, uh, Ohio originally, and just uh, you know growing up and seeing just like a lot of like you know bad seedy neighborhoods. You know, I was um, I was blessed in that you know I grew up um, well actually you know my old neighborhood actually um kind of went to hell and is is kind of a <laughs> is kind of a rough part of town um but you know i i spent a good chunk of um my my childhood you know in 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 safer suburbs but I, you know i have experienced like the the urban toughness of the city and have not always lived in nicer places and so this song resonates with me we're just like you know the streets you know with with the prostitutes on the corner and the drug dealers and just uh just how brutally tough those streets are and a lot of rock music doesn't really address this kind of um this kind of poverty and this kind of um kind of brutality of uh of urban life you know a lot of it is more just like fun and party and stuff and and if you want more um gritty looks at um, urban life that tends to be more in rap than in rock. You know, there are other examples. But but typically, you know, you don't get that visceral, powerful, um, you know, song about the streets um, unless it's rap. But this is a rock song that gives you that a visceral emotion and power with a really killer vocal from Phil. 
and super catchy. Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's great melody. You know, he's singing his heart out, um, and so you're you're getting that strong, like powerful emotional reaction inside a song that has momentum energy and is catchy so this basically this has everything it's just really great i'm going to rewind to here and we'll get back to it like a rat in a pack in a text from the back And I'm sorry, these these drum fills are just are so absolutely killer. And you know, rewind just a hair. These these freaking drum fills are so excellent. Jesus, so good. I mean, there's so much great stuff going on here. I mean, these the the vocals are just absolutely killer. You know, amazing, perfect lyrics really caption that atmosphere so well. Um, and just a a killer, killer solo. You know, well composed, full of energy. And then you know, into that into that bridge section. You know, so 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 su such an excellent bridge. And then the way it leads back into the main riff. Really, really, really excellent, and you know the the lyrics on that bridge just you know absolutely mind blowingly brilliant. Just really keeping this momentum going, uh, and just making this an excellent piece. I'm going to rewind just a hair. Yeah, just man, what a what a really really great song. Just ah oh, man, all around excellent. Apologies, you know, still still recovering from that cough, kids. Um, like 
I see no reason not to love this song. Like, if you are a fan of just rock, like, in general, um, th- this is a perfect song. I see nothing bad about this. Um, you Literally, I can't find any flaws with this. Um, the vocals are killer. The lyrics are killer. Uh, you know, the drumming, killer. Bass playing, killer. Uh, guitars, I mean, Gary Moore, Scott Gorham, like, you know, sort of that, both of them at the peak of their powers. Um, you know, it's it's a tight song. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It has great builds, great energy, great momentum. Like, this is perfection. Man, I am so over this coughing. But, you know, let's let's take a look at, you know, these lyrics, you know. You really dive in. Outside the wind, outside the window, the neon flashes in the morning light. Down on the sidewalk, there's a woman with a problem. She don't know how to fight. I mean, you know, really brilliant lyrics. You know, the the neon flashing, giving you the the sort of the atmosphere of neon signs and how the neon is still flashing even as the daylight comes. So like those remnants of the night are still there. And um, you know, it's not a safe place for a woman. You know, there's you know. Obviously, it's a dangerous place where you could get mugged, and, you know, she can't necessarily defend herself the same way that, like, a man could. Um, And that is something that is, you know, unfortunately very resonant. You know, she's destined and broken down. She softly whispers as the no one around, and no one hears the sound. Her knees give way and hit the ground. I mean, you know, that is just, you know, when someone is so, like, desperate that they just, they give up hope. Or, you know, she's, you know, a victim of a crime. And, you know, just, you know, begging for help. Uh, Like a rat in a pack, it attacks from the back through a crack in a track and you take a smack. You know, drug usage, obviously. And Jack has had a hard day. No one told him it would be like this. He's had to score the hard way and there's that trick he'll always miss. Um, You know, someone is, um, you know, desperate for, for drugs and, you know, that Jack probably you know, committed uh, some sexual acts to, you know, get some money for his drug fix. It's just another black spot where far too many people have died. It's just another graveyard and there's far too many people left alive. I mean, brilliant line about, you know, what it means to to live in this environment where, like, you're almost dead just by living there. It's like your body lives, but your soul has already died. And just like there's that desperation and, you know, clinging for some kind of hope and not being able to find any. You know, just a minor misdemeanor didn't mean no harm, but it's there's a constant reminder and it's there to warn, you know, people with criminal records. And then you go back um, outside the window. The neon is still flashing in the morning light down on the sidewalk. That one was blown away out of sight. So obviously, you know, she was a victim of a crime, you know, got shot, or, you know, her spirit was finally destroyed. It works on both levels. All across the city, no one do, gives a damn. All across the city, no one seems to understand. You know, folks, this ain't this ain't Lick It Up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I, I love Lick It Up, but, like, this is... You know, there is sort of a... I just watched the James Bond movies for the first time. Uh, or rather, I watched five James Bond movies for the first time because I was never super interested in them, but uh, a good chunk of them are free on YouTube. And so I watched one movie with each Bond to sort of, you know, get a feel for it and see if, you know, the franchise was for me, if there was, you know, something appealing about it. And the thing is, it's fun, but it's, um, it's, it's like candy in that, um... You know, it's good, but it's not going to give you sustenance. It's not going to. It's not going to keep you full. And so, with um, with J- with James Bond, it's like I'm enjoying it, but it's not changing my life, and it's not touching my soul. It's fun. Like I had fun watching those movies, but it didn't uh, change my life and like move me profoundly, and didn't resonate at the core of my being. Um, and you know, there's and the thing is, there's there's a place for entertainment like that. And so, like, a lot of Kiss lyrics are just, like, stuff that's fun but doesn't touch the core of my being. And then you have, um, like, movies that, you know, that, like, change your life and, like, you know, make you cry. And you're like, wow, that was, like, a, you know, a stunning piece of work. Um, And, uh, like, for me, this song is, like, 
those movies that make you cry, that, like, have more weight. Like, those pieces of art that are so important to you, they're just, like, at the core and fiber of your being. And the thing is, you can discover stuff like that, you know, throughout your life. So, like, you're not limited to just, you know, you heard it as a teenager or saw it as a teenager and that's it. Like, I'm still finding stuff that, you know, blows me away. Like, uh, like Frozen. I saw that when I was 23, and I wasn't expecting it to be a profound, life-changing movie, and then it ended up being one. Um, but for me, you know, th I think um, stuff that has a bit more weight behind it, um, just ultimately, um, I... With, with art, I, I enjoy stuff that's just, like, vapid, fun entertainment, but I think there's something to be said about art that can work as the vapid, fun entertainment, but also have that deeper layer that can touch your soul and change your life. And for me, um, this song has the the deeper layer that can touch your soul and change your life and sort of take you back to those days of, you know, rougher environments and, you know, glad that you're not in them anymore. I mean, I've got my nice little house in the burbs. But, you know, it, it also works as, like, a, as a rock song with momentum. Like, this is a song you can just jam to. So, like, it has the deeper level, but it's also just a really kick-ass rock song. And this sort of encompasses why I think Liz is so great. Because you've got that deeper layer, uh, and you've got just this kick-ass rock song on top. And the thing is, it's not so abstract that, like, someone can listen to it and not know what it's about. I understand with alternative rock, they tend to go, like, really deep and really abstract. But I think there's something to be said about being able to be more upfront and direct with your lyrics, but still have it be deep and powerful. And um, and still hooky, still catchy, still emotive. Like, this just, for me, this is a home run. If you don't like it, I'm sorry that you don't like rock and roll, and in which case, I don't know, go listen to Smooth Jazz, although Smooth Jazz is great, and actually, I could bring out a Jazzy Lizzie song next week, who knows, but, yeah, this is great, I, if you don't like this song, tell me why, tell me why you hate rock music, <laughs> that is the video, um, thanks, thanks for watching, be sure to do the like, in the commenting, the subscribing, tell me what you thought of this one, I think it's great, I don't see any flaws with it, at all, period. That's the video. Bye, everyone.